It's going to give us some spectacular pictures tonight. And we'll show you the starting lineup, our subway ticker across the top of the screen. Take a look and check out where your favorite driver is going to be lining up. And as the cars begin to roll off, let's uh, take a chat with our in-race reporter, Kevin Harvick. Hey, Kevin, Dale Jarrett, the ESPN. you have a copy? Four, Dale. Hey, Kevin, our first question comes from our ESPN mailbag. And Mike in St. Louis, Missouri asks, what are the main differences you've noticed in the new car? Obviously, from the hand gestures, Kevin is talking to us, and we're just not hearing him after the initial uh, high dale. So uh, we'll have to get back to that. Hey, Kevin, uh, have you done enough drafting and, and maybe bump drafting in practice to know that that's something that you will be able to do tonight with the bumpers lining up good enough? So, um, you know, these bumpers are the round in the front, so you got to be really careful about where you bump draft how you bump drafts and, and obviously who you bump, uh, bump drafting with. So uh, the handling pretty much takes care of the no bump drafting in the corners just because you got to give each other room to keep your cars going straight. About what you've seen so far, is it pretty fair to say that because of the worn out surface here, the heat, that we'll be looking at four tires pretty much every time you come to pit road? Four tires. I think, uh, you know, there's been a lot of guys uh, still probably pretty aggressive on their setups and we're pretty conservative uh, went definitely down the big time handling road uh, we might be too conservative on that but there's only one way to find out and that's the race all right Kevin thanks for talking with us and have a great night we'll talk to you later on thank you Kevin Harvick lined up ninth on the grid. You saw him index the steering wheel, get back at his place in line, set the pit road speed limit on the tachometer, double check things, and he'll be ready to go in another two and a half more pace laps. Have some time, so let's squeeze in a commercial break here before we go green. We'll come back with plenty of time before the Subway Jalapeno 250 gets underway. Yeah, it's that's the only thing I could think. Yeah, it's, it's easy with your gloves on a lot of times to think that you're pushing that. Yeah, it looked like he was kind of on the corner of it. <clears throat> yep. But I'm hearing they're getting so uh, we'll see what the actual window is after we make a fir our first green flag run. I like that stat down there. The trial that's going to be an exciting part of this race tonight. Deep driving these cars through there, even though it's putting part of the front straightaway, it's banked 18 degrees. Should be a handful for these guys. All right, that's one of those. Mark that down, and we'll note that one for later. Now we talked to some of the favorites in our countdown. Let's talk about some more of them, starting with Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you very much, Alan. You know, a reigning nationwide champion, Kyle Busch, has been nominated in the best driver category for the 18th annual SB Awards coming up on July 14th. Now, he may get a chance to prove really how good a driver he is here tonight. According to Kyle, he says, after 10 laps, these cars get looser and looser and looser, and in big packs, they can just snap sideways on you without any notice. He said the veteran drivers should be able to hang on, but those young guys in the big packs, oh my, look out. Folks, this one tonight has all the ingredients to resemble the move be days of thunder. It should be wild for the drivers, but fun for you and us to watch. Dave. And Doc, together with his teammate, Joey Logano, people have been asking this week, will the dominance of the Joe Gibbs racing cars the last couple of years in Nationwide continue, or will this car be the great new equalizer? Well, if you talk to the 20 team and crew chief Kevin Kidd, he says equalizer, he says it's just another opportunity for us to shine. Joey Logano starts 10th today. The last time here Dave, funny you should mention the word opportunity. Another driver looking for an opportunity tonight is Carl Edwards. He's looking to close the 247 point gap between himself and points leader Brad Keselowski. So the last thing Carl Edwards needed this weekend was a vibration inside that race car. Unfortunately, that's exactly what he had. The team spent all of final practice yesterday trying to diagnose the issue. They told me it was the driveline angle. They feel like they found the problem, they fixed it, and they are confident in that car out there tonight. Mike? Reflecting on the first super speedway race working with Justin Allgaier, crew chief Chad Walther said 
he was surprised at how advanced his drafting skills were. In the year or so since, Walter says there's been steady progression. While Walter stopped short of saying that Allgaier is a super speedway ace, you can tell he believes in his abilities. He says he knows the strengths and weaknesses of his race car, and if he works with his teammates tonight, there's no reason to believe they can't stay at the front and contend for this win. Alan, you can tell why the expectations are high. After all, they did finish fourth here back in February. And certainly the Penske Bunch worth keeping an eye on tonight. Now our over-the-wall reporter is a New England native born in Springfield, Mass. Rick Yeomans, rear tire changer for Mike Wallace. Hey, Rick, some difficulties you'll face operating on this new car for the first time? Well, I think it's going to be the longer studs. We've got have more threads showing. It's going to take more rotations, get the lug nut off, more to get them back on. I think the pit crews just have to get a better rhythm now with these new studs. It's going to take a while to get used to. Rick, thanks. We'll uh, enjoy stepping over the wall with you tonight. And uh, be safe. Have a great night. All right, so we've got Challengers, we've got Mustangs, we've got Impalas, we've got Camrys on the track for the very first time and making their debut on the sport's grandest stage here in Daytona International Speedway. Uh, all kinds of discussions and thoughts from the drivers about how it's going to be in the draft and how it's going to play out in traffic. Well, we're about to begin finding out the answers to all those questions and all that speculation. Pace car is off, 100 laps ahead. We'll keep an eye on the weather. We'll see how this thing plays out as the two Dodgers from the Penske team bring the field to the green flag. this first lap down the back stretch the two challengers from Penske are leading yeah I'm, I'm watching Dale Jr. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking he's gonna get a push and he try to go by the inside he had laid back here comes Kyle Busch giving him a shove now remember here at Daytona the yellow line on the inside of the racetrack is out of bounds you can't go below that yellow line and advance your position so we'll see if uh, Jr. finds some running room here as he's about to clear Kligerman off of turn four I think Brad's gonna get here first with a big push from Junior. Keslowski leads, Junior is second, Kyle Busch in the 18, inside of Kligerman for third, pretty much double wide from there on back through about 18 cars. Now, Dale Earnhardt Junior driving this three car in honor of his father. Remember in the year that Dale Sr. passed away. The race fans did a tribute at every racetrack on the third lap of the race where they basically stood and held up three fingers. That's about to happen here at Daytona tonight. And you can see as he was pushing Brad Keselowski there, you have to be careful in pushing these cars because he knocked him below the yellow line right there. Is he going to lead? this the three car to the lead on the third lap at Daytona how appropriate this is now see if he can hold it yeah that car's pretty loose right there he's getting a put wow. big push but he's so loose he can't get to the throttle whoa, he's gonna get whoa. back to the line first that's Kyle Bush behind run. him see Kyle just get off him there when they came through that trioval like you were talking about DJ how tough that corner is yeah these guys were telling me that you don't even have to be up against the car to get him so loose that it'll spin him out and that's what these guys are going to have to experience and be careful of here in the early stages of the race yeah the big thing with this new car is it's aerodynamically looser the teams have had to figure out ways to keep them tight uh, to adjust for it but they still have that characteristic and when they start bumping and getting real close to each other it makes it even worse so you're seeing just how tricky they are to drive this is on good tires too yeah yeah we heard him report that Kyle Busch said that after about 10 laps these cars just continue to get looser and looser there's the bump into the trioval Ooh, that's a dangerous place oh, to be doing man. that
So Earnhardt Jr. got to the front briefly. Keselowski got back by him. Now it's kind of like Harvick and Jr. kind of hung there side by side for second. Well, Looks maybe like not for long, just run. as I say it. <laughs> we'll see how, how far he can take it, though. He's getting a, you see Keselowski getting the bump now from Harvick. He had one allowed Jr. He got a push off a of turn two from Kyle Busch. Harvick dropped back from the 22, so he was getting no push. That's what gave Jr. the big run. Remember that one of the things we talked about during our coverage of qualifying, we were talking about the two different types of setups under the cars. The coil bound setups that are faster, but maybe a little more unstable, and the conventional setups. And Harvick giving up some speed in qualifying for the stability in the race. Let's see, he's up to racing for second. Yeah, but it, it really hasn't taken effect until the tires get worn and get hot. That's when you're going to see that kind of setup probably come to the front even more. Uh, this, the coal bound setup is something that NASCAR has opened up the rules on front springs at this track for the first time, and now these teams are able to play with it. Uh, and you see Junior still fighting on the outside. I mean, looks like he's probably kind of committed to that outside lane for a while. Yeah, and you talk about that coal binding setup. It uses and, and literally can abuse the tires if you're not careful. So uh, the, the conventional springs uh, are a lot easier on the tires, and that's, as you were saying, Andy, we'll see that come into effect after they get 15 or 20 laps on it. Now that lead pack under power heading down towards turn one. You saw Kevin LePage's car off the pace on the apron. That one's fun at four. Do have one spun. And wow, big crash. Jennifer Joe Cobb in the 27 and Johnny Chapman in the 43. Fire, can I get out yet? Yep. Caution flag for the first time. You see Chapman has dropped his window net, and that was Jennifer Joe, you heard, uh, talking on her radio, now dropping her window net. And so the first crash comes six laps into the race up in turn four, pretty well back in the pack. Yeah, this, this crash happened actually kind of detached from the group a good ways back. I think the look we're going to see of this is picked up in progress already. Just looking at this, it might be a situation that the 27 spun and then was hit in, in the rear. Yeah, that's what it looks like. All right there, you can see just yeah. catches Chapman up there. He's trying to avoid this spin. It looked like the 27 maybe hung the left front down on the apron, caused it to get loose and shot up in front of Johnny Chapman. That flash fire went out as they stop here. Hmm. Pretty significant fire. Wow. And yeah, that was kind of right there pushing it in her window. Yeah. Jennifer Joe Cobb making her nationwide series debut here at Daytona. It will be a memorable one, but not for the kind of memory she was hoping to make. Chapman out of his car. And you see the safety workers there talking to Cobb at her car in turn four. Caution for the first time, six laps in here at Daytona. I looked up, I didn't think there was any cars over on that part of the track. All of a sudden I see somebody, I was like looking for, I was looking for LePage. Yeah. Wow, that had to be the most insane thing I've ever been a part of. <laughs> we got to get that in. Uh, what's, no, what's happening is they're putting pointer light, light is coming on, and we don't have that in here to see the pointers. We got the wrong thing in ISO. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that way we can see the, what the pointers are. I can see the light that said they were in. Brian, listen to the nerve of that 19-year-old. Wow, that had to be the most insane thing I've ever been a part of. Uh, the three and the 18 were just being idiots, so I was trying to back off them. And uh, sure enough, they almost wrecked us all right there. I had to back out of it just right our back of it. Uh, idiots, huh? Well, the three and the 18 may go and win this race, too, so Parker may want to work with them rather than be angry with them as the night goes on, Alan. <laughs> if Parker stays around long enough, he'll realize that that's the kind of things that are going to happen at Daytona and Talladega all the time. <laughs> I had a spotter one time, was a spot for one of my drivers. He said, the driver said something, but everybody's acting like idiots. He said, hey, you're all idiots. Just keep pedaling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you were with us for our coverage of qualifying earlier today, you saw Reed Sorensen in his backup car really throwing some sports out behind that machine 
he was just on pit road a minute or so ago to have some adjustments made to try and remedy that situation. Yeah, after qualifying, they went back and made some adjustments and had to start back in the rear. But they're, you can see right here, they're, they're trying to make some adjustments to keep this car off the ground because this is a backup car. They had limited practice with it. And uh, everything being so new, it's really hard to predict where to set this thing and just, you know, without a lot of laps on it. Tim Brewer in the Crashman Tech Garage. What were they doing? Tell you what they're trying to do, Alan, they're trying to raise the car up on the right front because on the right side here, this is the trailing arm cross member that sits in the center of the car and it's probably dragging right here in this area. But what this controls is a trailing arm that controls back here to rear wheel. But the exhaust pipes comes out on this side also, but these areas right here, along with the K member up front, if it's hitting, when it bottoms out, it literally lifts that tire off the ground and it's very unstable for the guys driving the car. You kind of want those tires on the ground as best you can have them at 190 as miles an as hour. Possible. I would think so. So uh, Sorensen back out after adjustments to his car, and we continue the cleanup from the first caution here at uh, Daytona. As you see, some of the safety workers continuing down there inside turn number four to uh, remove those cars and clean up any of the debris. Yeah, I was just thinking those two cars that crashed, that, that was both the Baker Curve Racing Team's cars. First next generation race and both your race cars six laps in that hurts. Yeah that, that does hurt when you get both of them in one wreck. Mm. You know I, I know DJ uh, you talked about this uh, a little bit at the top of NASCAR countdown a minute ago but just the thrill of coming here to Daytona every time you walk in the gates it's just it's an amazing place to me. Yeah it makes no difference what type of race it is whether you know, when I was here whether it was the 500 uh, the, the 400 uh, nationwide race I rock race yeah, anything anytime that you could race just a very very special place. Got uh, a lap to go before the green want to try our in race reporter. Hey Kevin Dale Jarrett you have a copy. All right, I tried to come up with a good question for you here. Uh, how was the start of it? I know a lot of anticipation about what may happen with these cars. How was it? Start was great. Um, you know, everybody's dancing around a little bit less than I thought they would actually, but uh, looks like um, you know it's going to be a fun night. It looks like the track's got a little more grip, but the cars are still going to move around. So, great start for everybody. Okay, man, go back at it. Good luck. Yeah, one thing that's really played into their hands and their, in their favor is that we've had a cool day and the track hasn't got a lot of temperature in it to start with, so uh, it does have a little more grip. Any grip that you find out here, I <laughs> promise you, makes a huge difference because this racetrack is just so worn. So anything that can help makes you feel yeah, almost like you're Superman, you know, that, that the cars are really good then. Verizon Wireless customers, text CHAMPION to 43776 for exclusive Champion Chats content from our NASCAR Now Roundtable experts. I think this week's is on Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, a little momentum we've seen from Team 48, and uh, which one our panel thinks is going to have the most wins and the most bonus points come chase time. That's a good question. They had pretty good answers. Yeah. Jennifer Joe Cobb treated and released from the infield care center. Good news there. All right, so we had the first pole with the next generation race car. Went to Brad Kozlowski. He led the first lap. First lead change. Uh, actually, Dale Jr. Has yet to happen at the start. Happen, the start That's right. And uh, now we're going to have the first restart. Enough of the first until we see the, who the first winner is. <laughs> okay. I was, getting, I was getting that look from Andy like, okay. Yeah. I like for Brad to keep leading for a while, though, because he's got Dale Jr. on his bumper right here. And I know Harvick's car is good, but I think, as we've heard him say it, that's going to pay off for him later on. Dodge, Chevy, Chevy, Ford, Toyota in the first five spots. And here we go. Oh, looks like Jr. got into the back of Keselowski a little bit there on the go. These cars really accelerate a lot faster than they used to here because they've got about 150 almost uh, more horsepower. That's going to hurt Brad right here because Carl Edwards is on Kevin Harvick's bumper and pushes him out front right now. Here comes Junior. Brad's got help coming. Johnny Chapman treated and released from the infield medical center. Bump. Yep. Here they go. Looks like we may have our second leader. Harvick cuts low in front of Keselowski. Carl Edwards to his outside. 
Edwards got Boyer oh, behind man. him in the 21. And yeah, dancing around down yeah, the bottom. Yeah, that's really rough down there. It's where you want to be, but it's extremely rough. You got to have it pointed in the right direction. Really interested to watch how some of these drivers, like you saw Keslowski there, he bumped uh, Harvick on the short shoot, but he backed off him going into the trioval. And he had another first. He had a first Chevrolet to lead a lap. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Dr. Jerry Punch is with Jennifer Joe Cobb. Yeah, you mentioned she's okay out of the hospital uh, after being checked out. Jennifer, what happened? You know, that's the first time in our ill-fated trip down here, this new Ford Mustang, that we've had anybody behind us. And we're, there's so many of us back there just trying to be safe. And I, you know, was making just real clean, safe passes. And that's the first time another car had been on our bumper all weekend. And the rear end just did not hold. I mean, he, he did nothing wrong. I hate it for Johnny Chapman. And I hate it for our team because they work so hard. This is definitely going to take a financial hit for us. We may not be back. We may have to uh, retract that three race deal with uh, Baker Kerr because this actually is going to hurt us in that department. But we'll see y'all next week in Chicagoland with the number 13 driven. Uh, Driven Mill and the um, Iowa our Camping World Truck Series. That's going well, so we're going to focus there for a while. Tough night for Jennifer Joe Cobb, baby. All right, Doc, thanks. So, great fight for the lead. Harvick inside, 33. Edwards outside, 60. How about a little side draft in there? Yeah, I think that was unintentional, though, <laughs> because I think he got loose and he just followed his car down there. I, I see a lot of guys just aiming these cars. I mean, it's just they're dancing all over the place. I don't know how they can afford to be doing this bump drafting, but uh, they're getting away with it. Wow. Yeah, that's Clint Boyer. We're watching right there. You know, he started back a little ways. Made his way up towards the front. Earnhardt Jr. got put in the middle there, like uh, you were talking the about. The wrong way. He's going backwards. Gives up a couple of spots there. Yeah, there's just nothing you can do except try to find you a hole whenever you get put in that situation. Car gets so loose with cars on both sides of you. Yeah, you see you Harvick now getting passed by quite a few cars. Must have had to get out of the throttle. Well, we're getting up to lap 14 now. The handling's going to start going away here. What handling there was. Yeah, what <laughs> things to start with. The tires were kind of holding them for a while. Three single file at the front. You're looking back at the double file race for fourth. Talked about Harvick losing some spots. Shannon? Well, Kevin Harvick has been very good all weekend, guys. You heard him in qualifying today. You heard him in countdown. He said that they've given up speed in order for drivability. One way that they've done that is with the conventional spring setup. They are not coil bound here tonight. They said during the test in May, they went out with a coil bound setup. The car was very edgy, so they tried something new, and they think it's really going to pay off for this team here tonight. They said that they won't be fast as the rest of the guys, but they will definitely have the handling, and that they feel will win them the race. Guys? Shannon, thanks. Look at Carl Edwards working that wheel. Well, so they're talking about uh, good handling cars. That's a relative thing right now. <laughs> none of these cars are really handling that great. Goes Boyer. There's, yep, there's another leader. And that is a car also that went back and forth between coil binding and, and the bigger springs. And Clint Boyer told me, he said, I, I could drive it the other way, but I would be a passenger more than a driver. He said, I'm in control better with these springs like this. Now he's in the lead. They see another guy that can drive a car out of control. Kyle Busch up on the top now with some momentum. Let me just clarify. Yes, the onboard was Kevin Harvick, but Carl Edwards had his hands full down at the bottom of the racetrack. For the lead, Justin Allgaier in the 12. And he's got no help. You see that 21 get sideways, get in the corner there? They're driving these things. They're earning every dollar they're getting paid for this. Now, Clint Boyer's a dirt racer. He's he's a little used to backing a car into the corner that way. Yeah, but, but not at the that's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, three wide. Logano up top. Now that put Kyle Busch in the middle in a way that he didn't want. We saw him go three wide and make a pass a while ago. When you're getting past, that's a terrible place to be. See how he handles it here. He's back three wide again. His teammate on the outside. While we watch this, Dr. Punch is caught up with Johnny Chapman. Yeah, back at the hospital. And Johnny, from your vantage point, uh, what happened out there? Well, uh, I was trying to stay back there out of the way and let everybody go. And... Uh, uh, Jennifer come up on me there pretty hard, so I let her go on and let her get. I uh, didn't want to be drafting with anybody right now. My car was was really good and uh, let her go on there in front. And I don't know, she got loose and spun getting in the corner. And, um, you know, there's at that point, there's nowhere to go. And um, 
she just come back up the track and I got collected. But uh, man, I hate it for these guys that's worked so hard to get these cars going and just just terrible. I hate it for them and they worked awful hard to, to get this to happen. And man, I, I just uh, I thought I had plenty of room there, but uh, run come up short. Happens in a hurry here at Daytona, baby. All right, thanks. Joining Chapman and Cobb in the garage, we saw Kevin LePage off the pace earlier. His car was pushed to the garage, and Morgan Shepard just coasted down the pit lane and made the left turn into the garage. Paul Menard, 98, trying to move forward. He's got Kyle Busch and Brad Keselowski with him. Joey Logano giving up some ground on the outside in the 20. And how about this 15? I talked about earlier some drivers just having a knack for drafting. That's Michael Annette in the 15. And he just seems to have a feel for this big track stuff. It must be an instinctive thing. I know there's so many drivers that are good at it. You see, Jamie McMurray, Dale, you are the same way here. I, I, I've never really been able to figure out. You can't put your finger on what the skill set is that makes you good here, but it's like an instinctive thing. Yeah, I had good race cars, though. I won't take that credit, but. He does an excellent job. My son Jason spots for for Michael Annette and he says he really does a good job. He's very calm in the car but really enjoys this type of racing and that's half the battle if you do enjoy coming here and running in these type of situations. Now you see Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to come back around to the outside of Michael Annette Jr. has fallen down to 11th spot. He's racing Annette there for 10th and he's got one of the young drivers for his junior motorsports team Steve Arpin right behind him in that seven car getting some Daytona drafting experience from the boss. Well, if he can hang with Junior, he can learn a lot here. Got more for us, Dave? Yeah, interesting to think about what they must be going through in their mind. Actually, uh, the driver and crew chief, Tony Urie Jr., on Thursday, Yuri told me that they had two setups they wanted to put in the car, and the one they went with was the one that helped the car recover faster after he got shuffled out of the draft. We haven't seen much recovery here, so I'm really glad they didn't use the other one, but they got to be thinking, man, this shit takes a long time for us to get back up to the front now. Do remember, though, that they didn't run in packs like this in practice, so a lot of the things we talk about, the things that are unknown, they're finding out now for the three car. Hard to recover. Interesting stuff, Dave. Yeah, it really is. And just as it was pointed out earlier, too, I think Kevin Harvick said it that they haven't really put much more than 20 laps on a set of tires at one time or being out there for that long a time. So they're in unknown, unknown territory right now, too, as to what these cars will actually do. And interesting to note that 20 laps in, the lead pack has pretty much strung out single file, and we're beginning to see some guys hunt that high line around the racetrack to try and compensate for their car's handling or lack thereof. Climb in the hill down there. Junior all the way up top there, scraping it. You know, they really haven't started pedaling. Right up to Clint Boyer's back bumper. Oh, oh, man, look at that drive car. this car. Wow. I'll tell you what, they're wheeling these cars. Clint Boyer's radio a minute ago. Hey, you guys are really. You know, you pull them through one and two. Don't let him get too close to me up off. He does. I got to give it to him. He's going to send me out. That's you know, just the air looseness of these cars. And if you get close enough, you don't have to touch anybody. Just getting even more air off of that rear spoiler makes you sideways and makes it difficult to drive. And that's the guy leading the race. So much for the single car, single file 12 car lead draft. They've doubled up again. Shannon? Well, Clint Boyer free in the middle, free going in and tight in the middle. But guys, you saw he's having a hard time staying on that bottom line. That is what he's most struggling with right now. Before he climbed in the car, before the race, I asked him what it was like driving these cars, and he laughed and said, man, they are a handful. Mike? Shannon, talking with Brad Keselowski's crew chief, Paul Wolf, at the beginning of the weekend, he told me before they came down here in May for the open test, there was a definite sense of anxiety. They did not know what to expect, but when they left, 
they were at ease, a sense of relief. They knew they had a good car. That prevailed throughout the course of this week. In fact, Brad said after practice, I know we've got a car as good, if not better, than everyone else out there. He's proving that once again. He's out in front. He says the only time we have trouble is when we're getting pushed. Then we get a little bit loose. I see another car in that group, that one car of Ryan Newman. I saw him working the bottom. His car looked pretty solid. It's, and that's all relative. All of them look like they're... <laughs> They're sliding around quite a bit, but you can see working the bottom of the racetrack pretty well. There's Newman. That may pay off here in a little while. Showing in 10th position right now and looking for more on the bottom. You can see Dale Jr. right in front of him has made his way back up into this lead pack after falling back a little while ago. And what was the term Dave used before? Uh, recovery? Yeah. Yeah, look how much uh, Newman's getting out of the throttle completely. You still see, I'm looking at the lap times, and they're still running relatively fast lap times. Man, look at him pedal these cars, though. See, yeah. Junior had to get out of the throttle right there. Oh, boy. That was Eric McClure. The uh, lead pack was putting a lap down. A moment for Junior. Kind of broke that lead pack up just for a bit. Yeah, and I think Junior's car is extremely loose, and when somebody gets up on his bumper, he just has to get out of the gas, and... He couldn't stand that right there. He was going forward by getting a push down the straightaway, but once he got to that closeness in the corner, he just couldn't do it anymore. Thirty laps into this run, let's talk about some pitch strategy. On the only caution we've had so far, we saw some of the cars in the back part of the field dive onto pit road and make stops, but none of those cars are in this lead pack. Yeah, they'd only run about eight laps when they made those pit stops. Those cars on the back part of the field. Uh, we'll see. They'll be able to stay out a little bit longer. I'm not sure if it goes green that they'll want to, though, because as soon as these cars start pitting and get tires, I don't think you want to sit out there on the track and lose time to them. When do you think we see the first move? About 35 or so? Well, <laughs> we don't know. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out. At the start of the race, there were two very similarly painted Penske discount tire machines on the front row. Brad Kozlowski's is still leading, but Parker Kligerman has fallen back to 20th place from the beginning of that group to the back of that next group. Dave, what's going on? Just confirmed with crew chief Chris Carrier, Parker Kligerman definitely dropping back and just hanging out for right now. I kind of worry about that, that strategy right now because you see how these packs are getting broken, broken apart, and that can actually even get worse as it goes. I'd be kind of, if I was going to drop back, I think I'd just try to do it on the lead, in that lead group. I'd have to say, too, maybe that they're not telling us everything there. They didn't practice a lot with this car because, as you explained in, in qualifying, in, this car was is Brad Keselowski's backup, so they couldn't have it on the track a lot. I, so I don't know that he is really happy with his race car at this point in time. Maybe he's hanging out until he can work on it and get it to driving somewhat better. Just ahead of them, that 88 car out of the Junior Motorsports stables, Greg Sachs. 25 years after his win in the Firecracker 400 here at Daytona. Back again, one race shot for Sachs, the company that sponsors that car, he owns. He's one of the principal investors in, and they are going to sponsor the 88 car with Ron Fellows at Watkins Glen and Elliott Sadler for a number of races. <laughs> and uh, Sachs right now running in 18th position. Uh, again, 25 years after his great upset win here at Daytona. 57 years old. Yeah, for not being in a race car, he's doing a nice job. Here's the answer. Pit stops. Oh, 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 I got to behind you. Caution, caution. caution is out. They don't get hit. Oh, oh, oh my keep goodness. Going. What a job Keselowski did there to, to <laughs> get back on the track. Uh, you were going to make the commitment commit. line. The yellow light was closed, and we were already committed. I'm not sure, though. He wouldn't have been better off to go ahead and make that. Flat tires, be careful. Well, go slow, flat tires. I think that's what Joey Meyer, the spotter, was telling Brad, that the move to get back on the racetrack was the right one because they weren't going to make the commitment line before pit road would have been closed. So that's why he made that move. Yeah. So Michael and Ed with some trouble in the, uh, I'm assuming, slow down to get the pit road. Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, a lot of times you, you get in that situation and the driver behind you is not fully aware that you're coming to pit road. So he, he could have gotten tapped or just situation of getting hard on the brakes. You can get the car very loose. Let's see. I like it when we find out for sure. Yes. 
Uh, he's up on the high side. He just got loose. Yeah, yeah, that didn't have anything it. to do with it. I'm pretty sure he wasn't trying to make pit road. <laughs> <laughs> but he did a nice job of saving this, not hitting anything. And Algar just missing him. Wow. Yeah, he didn't realize when he was trying to get back on the racetrack that uh, he was put himself in the danger lane there. Mm. <laughs> Man, close call. It's not surprising though that these Dodgers are the first ones to try to make a green flag stop. They're making a lot of power, and that doesn't uh, bode well for mileage. So they were coming to pit road right here. And you can see, I mean, they're out of control trying to get their car stopped, and still made this move. Back onto the racetrack. You see the commitment cone there, center of the picture. So the beginning of the pit road speed limit, rather. We cannot afford a penalty here. Cannot afford a penalty. 4,700 at the line. 47. Spin behind you. Cushions out. Cushions out. Spin out. Come on. Watch him outside. 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 There you go. Come on. What a good job of spotting right there. Yeah, it was. I'm sure Justin was probably thinking, I'm pushing this throttle as hard as it'll go, but this is as much as I can get. Here's Brad Kozlowski's radio. Watch the yellow line here. Oh, crap. I got a spin. I got a spin behind you. Caution, caution, caution. Get up. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. He's behind you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Watch out, turn Watch out, watch out. Get going. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> got busy, didn't it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Good job, though. Joey Meyer, the spotter for Brad Kozlowski, longtime spotter for Martin Truex Jr. And, uh, and wow, very nice, animated. Yeah, nice job. <laughs> and that's one of the things that's really hard because you say, okay, they weren't to the commitment cone, but they had committed to pit road, but it was going to be a penalty uh, if they would have gone on to pit road. And so they did the right thing by being able to get back out there. But that's that's something that I think is, has been a struggle as far as the rules go, but that's what the rule is. Well, I'll tell you what, all these leaders, all these guys glad to see this caution come out, though, so they can get four new tires on these cars and make some chassis adjustments. So in all that mayhem, Kyle Busch became the leader. Brad Kozlowski and Justin Allgaier went back to ninth and 10th. Michael Lynette limped around. He's on pit road, getting fresh tires, looking to get off pit road and come back around to the field. Obviously, he's uh, come in before the pit road was open, so he'll start at the back of the line. And 34 laps into this race, these pit crews are going to get a look at a set of tires off these race cars with pretty much a full fuel run on them. That should help to see what the car is doing and how it's acting. You can look at those tires and read it. Uh, Doc, they're coming to you. 55 miles an hour. They reminded Kyle Busch his pit road is also worn out. This is the racetrack. It's going to be slippery. He stops okay. They're going to put four tires on. going to top it off with Sunoco fuel and make an air pressure change. Dave. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has a Sprint Cup pit crew. He says, I don't need anything. I'm loose and tight, but I do need Snoko fuel, and I will take four Goodyear tires. Shannon? Kevin Harvick, bottom left, said it would take 15 laps to figure out how the car is. So far, it's good. No changes, four tires. Mike? Ryan Newman complaining his car's just a little bit tight. They're going to take four tires as well. They're going to go down a round and a half on the track bar. They're going to try to free that car up a little bit. They're away. A very clean stop for the one. Our nationwide insurance race off pit road. Wow. Seven spots, four tires for Keselowski. Now, remember what Rick Yeomans, our over-the-wall reporter, told us? These pit stops might take a little longer because of the longer studs on the car. Let's watch. All right, the GNK Services Chevy and Mike Wallace is terrible right now. Very loose with somebody pushing. <laughs> On this left side, I'm going to put a full spring rubber in. There we go. Full rubber in the left rear and four rounds down on the left rear. Pretty big adjustment. Way to go, Rick. Caution out for the second time tonight at Daytona. I think one thing would be kind of neat to look at is the fastest uh, pit stop, maybe a top five, Neil. And if you look at it, you know, the 22 did not have the fastest stop, and he has that pit stall down there in game seven spot. Uh-huh. He didn't have a bad one, but it wasn't. It's 14-7. There's a lot of them quicker. Yeah, wondering how he picked up all the spots. Hey, Andre. One pit stop, ball position. Andre. Right. I what still, you say? Were we doing that now? <laughs> oh, you're thinking something else? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, that's, that's a lot of spots when you look at guys. 
All right, right there. From the uh, leader's car, Kyle Busch. If I had a different restrictor plate, I'd be kicking these guys. As oh, believe me, they know it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that a discussion on the various horsepower comparisons of different makes of cars in Kyle's mind. And well, that's definitely referring them. to uh, some of these other engines. The older style engines can run just a slightly larger tapered spacer. Uh, they've done that in order to equal the horsepower uh, advantage from some of the newer design engines. Uh, Kyle's making a statement there that maybe it went too far. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say that whenever you're cars are running first and third yeah. with Toyota now that Joe it's hard to get anybody to listen to you anyway. yeah you can say it all you want <laughs> right so Brad Kozlowski went from being on the outside of the front row for the double file restart to getting shuffled back single file Lone Ranger on the outside a little three wide action for a minute in that second group Trevor Bain 99 Ryan Newman one Stenhouse in the six Steve Wallace in the 66 Trevor Bain doing a nice job making his way back up through the pack up into the 13th, 14th spot, depending on which part of the track they're on. <laughs> yeah, they need to try to close the gap here. They need to try to get in line and catch that lead group. They're losing just a little bit of ground to them. That lead group will take care of itself here in a minute whenever they decide that they don't want Kyle Busch to lead anymore and they get side by side. There goes Kozlowski falling back in line all the way back in 10th spot. Meantime, you mentioned Trevor Bain biggest mover in the race so far. Yeah, he actually missed the driver's meeting and had to start in the rear, so that put him back there. He had a reasonable qualifying effort, but Andy, they were excited about their car. Yeah, I talked to Jerry Baxter, the crew chief. They were excited uh, about this car and how it's run, how they were excited about qualifying, and it ran well there. See, now they've lined up together, the one car, Ryan Newman and, and Trevor Bain, try to catch that group ahead. Shannon? Guys, can you say momentum? Trevor Bain absolutely has that on his side right now. He's coming off his career best finish last week of fifth. He's moved up three spots in the points in the last five races to 10th in the standings. But guys, he really considers this his debut at Daytona, despite the fact that it's his second start. He only had six laps in February. They're really looking for a good run for Trevor Bain. Made a small adjustment on that last pit stop, but he's doing a great job out there. It's crazy up front right now. Look at these guys. I told you they'd take care of this. Yeah. Rick. Side by side racing here. Teammates. Yep. The Joe Gibbs Racing Dynamic Duo, Kyle Bush, Logano. And now you see Trevor <laughs> Payne and Ryan Newman have caught this group, just like we said. That's what Carl Edwards was telling. You can see these cars moving around. I was asking him about bump draft, and he said because the cars move around so much, he said he needed like a honing device to get in onto the back bumper to, to bump draft somebody because of so much movement. Right look there, look at that. Logano just getting sideways again. And this is on the straightaway. Yeah, don't think these guys don't know exactly what they're doing in these things <laughs> by doing that. Oh, that's right. Uh, they'll be using these moves come like yeah, the last done 10 laps. Before. Yes. It's funny. I was talking to Mike Wallace this morning, and he said, you know what's the, the most puzzling thing about these Daytona and Talladega races? Why we always wreck on the straightaway? <laughs> Whoa, who's that getting cut out of the herd? It's Carl Ember saying, I've had enough, guys. Y'all go. It I'll is. get back here and ride a little while. That's okay. Uh, Carl's going below the line. That's okay to get out of the way. He's not advancing his position. That's the key thing there. Yeah, if you're going backwards, that's okay. Yeah. They don't penalize you for yeah. that. Now the question is, what exactly is going on there? Look at the cars going by that 60. That looks like something's wrong with that race car. Boyer goes to the lead. Logano's sliding back a little bit, too. Yeah, Logano could only hold his breath for a lap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Remember Keselowski had fallen back? Here he is up to third. Fast race car he's got. On the outside, creeping into the picture, red numbers on the roof. Jason Leffler, while up front, here's Keselowski. What did I just say? He was back to, to 10th or 11th in line? Yeah. And I guess I was kind of stating the obvious since he won the pole, but it's, it is a fast car that whenever he gets it headed in the right direction, it looks like it might take him on new tires a couple of laps to get the handling the way that he wants. So you, you see that car up on the top, right in front of Junior. Looks like it's uh, the 11 car. Now that's a 38. I can't tell you. Got got to be able to see the numbers. They have the same sponsor, but Jason Leffer went way up the track. Solid run for that 38 so far. He started back in 20th. 
I'm telling you, he is right up on that wall, though. And look at the wheels inside the fender wells, how, how up and down they're going and how rough the track is there. Yes, yeah, extremely rough. It's a fast way because you can keep a lot of momentum up there, and you're not abusing the tires as much by running that high line, but you've got to have some help. Racing for 10th spot with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jr. is going to get through there. Steve Wallace racing for 11th up front. Shaking out single file a little bit. Clint Boyer, the defending winner of this race, is out in front. It's been exciting so far. Well, that's that's smart. Yeah, it looked like that what he was doing. Yeah, the problem is they just don't have quite enough rear downforce no. to be doing to be bump draft. It'll cause a big problem here before long. Yep. It'll cause a huge wreck. Is that okay, boys? Oh, I've yeah, had yeah. enough. They're earning their money tonight. And like we saw earlier in the first run of the race. About a 12-car pack has started to break away from the rest of the field. Now we're looking back from that 12-car pack to find Carl Edwards. And if you want to find Carl, you've got to go all the way back right now to 21st position to come up with him. Wouldn't somebody think this might break up the Gibbs domination or something like that? Well, that's that's the one too. Wasn't that Kevin Harvick said? The most exciting thing about the debut of this new car was that Kyle Busch and Joey Logano wouldn't get to run the old cars anymore that they've been <laughs> doing so much winning in. So I think we can safely say that those guys are pretty good drivers. Yeah. Look at Michael Annette. Just after this group goes by, there's Michael Annette in the 15. He's making his way back up into the, uh, he's right now in the 15th place. All right, so all the way back to Carl Edwards. And uh, the moment we saw about eight laps, nine laps ago now, where Carl was running in seventh spot and kind of bailed out going down from the start finish line toward turn one. He's running behind Parker Kligerman now. And again, Edwards in 21st position. Lead change, Allgaier, Keslowski, the Penske posse through the Gibbs guys. <laughs> Justin Allgaier doing a nice job getting himself back up there at the front of this pack. Young man doesn't have a ton of experience here at Daytona, but seems to have learned more and more about the draft every time he's been here. Mike? When you talk about the limited experience he has here at Daytona, well, DJ, this team tried to do something about that. They basically sequestered him and his spotter this week, Chris Osborne, to make sure they were on the exact same page. Justin was having a little bit of difficulty seeing out the front and rear window of this car. His perspective is different, so he wanted to make sure that the communication process between him and Osborne was accurate. Well, if you listen to the communication tonight, it's clearly like a play-by-play. -play. Osborne telling him where to be and when to go telling him which lane's moving, which lane is not, and it's obviously helping Allgaier. Allgaier's out front right now, and that Penske 10 is looks awfully strong. You know, it's definitely a team effort between the spotter and the driver at these type of races, and some drivers like more or less of that kind of communication, but it really is vital to know which lines are moving and uh, where you really need to be at a certain time. I am so impressed with that light blue and white 99 car, Trevor Bain. He says this is basically like his Daytona debut all over again. Came here in February, only got a handful of laps into the race and got caught up in a wreck. Yeah, he got crashed early and he was running well then. I think you know, he was very disappointed because he had a great car for the race in February and he's got a great one tonight if he can keep it clean. How cool do you think it is to him to look in the rearview mirror and see that three car behind yeah. him? <laughs> Let's check in on Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dave. And checking in with uh, Tony Uri Jr., his crew chief. Tony, he hasn't given you a whole lot of information, and he didn't want any adjustments on that first stop. Can you tell if he has a good race car or not? I think it's pretty good. It's just a little too free to be on the bottom there a couple times, and uh, he's just moving around, making it work. But I think we'll just tighten it up just a little bit on the next stop because definitely the bottom lane is where you need to be. Can you tell, is he playing it safe at all? It doesn't look a lot real safe out there right now. Well, I 
think the, uh, you know, some of the setups of the cars were just bouncing too much. And, you know, it's just, uh, you know, a product of just learning these cars, see what happens. But I think he's going to be in good shape. We'll see what happens. Calm and cool down here in the three pit, guys. I watched the last lap. The uh, junior ran through one and two on the bottom. And he, he actually beat Clint Boyer through there pretty good. Looked like maybe he's found a little better line through there. If your car's free and you can can hold the wheel and get through on that bottom, obviously the short way around. But if it's turning that good, uh, probably a lot of these cars are starting to tighten up a little bit, possibly, and uh, that will make him be able to pull away and get a good run down the straightaway. All right, got two Dodges down low and three Toyotas making a run up high. All Guyer trying to fend off Kyle Busch for the race lead. See, Kyle got a push into the corner there, but it got him loose and he had to go up the racetrack. Here comes Junior on the bottom. He's making that bottom work right now. Pretty much by himself. <laughs> hey, hey, Trevor, that three car's not behind you anymore. <laughs> and I think that with a free race car like that, you, you can run kind of by yourself. It's whenever you get someone tucked up on your rear bumper that makes it difficult to drive, and that's when we've seen him have to come out of the gas. You see, that time through there, he was able to uh, pull past that 99 car now and get clear. We are just past halfway in the Subway Jalapeno 250 at Daytona. Justin Allgaier is the race leader right now. I don't know who that was up toward the front of that line that we caught the glimpse of there jumping around <laughs> like that. That's that's something. Off it. Hey, what that three car's handling right now? Hey, as long I as think he, he kind of got somebody. up off that high side. I think he was trying to work it up there and it just wasn't working. Yeah. Found and I'm thinking maybe. Who was working for the lead on lap three. He was coming really, really hard. Brad Keselowski, though, just held on to the charge. But the three cars charging up through the field. Looks like the old time once again. Well, speaking of those Penske cars, almost a huge disaster for them. Lap 32, Allgaier and Brad K trying to get down pit road. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, Michael, Michael Lynette. Lynette goes for a spin there. And both of those guys last minute uh, directions from their spotters and crew chiefs don't go down pit road, so they're not caught under the caution. Great save for both of those guys. So check this out. Penske and Gibbs, the cars have won 10 of the last uh, 11 races, and look who's running 1-2 right now. It is Justin Allgaier and Kyle Busch, and that third car? Absolutely, but the, the question three. the question for me is, where did Carl Edwards go? Guys, we got to get some info on that. What happened to Carl Edwards? Paul Menard off the pace, Brad. Tear a fender up or anything? Yeah. Yeah, it pops. Yeah, it looks like the right front's down there. Well, I think uh, Brad's question about Carl Edwards, I think Carl called in scared there for a little while. He just <laughs> wanted to get out of that big mess up front. And for the lead, Kyle Bush to the outside, and this time he's got some drafting help from Junior and all guy. Look at this. Well. Guess Junior didn't want to run that very high lane around the top of the track. Well, once you push the guy out there and send him on, then you've got no help there yourself. He wasn't junior wasn't getting pushed from behind and so that kind of left him sitting. He'll make his way back. This car is handling really good right now. We heard Tony Jr. say that they might make an adjustment, but I'm sure they're talking about that right now, Andy. Well, he was making time on the bottom of the racetrack till he caught that lead to uh, two cars there and they were occupying that lane. So he was looking for a way around. That's kind of how he got forced up there. Now the question becomes flat tire before the fender crunch or the fender crunch and then the flat tire. Yeah, more than likely the tire went down and he got in the wall. See, he's up there, but that's still a good question. Now, yeah. I, I would say he probably did cut a tire down somehow. I, I thought I heard on the radio he said it popped. Yeah, yeah. So, would support your conclusion. Tough luck for Paul Menard, who had been having a solid run in the race so far. You see, Ernard Jr. got shuffled, but here he comes back. He's got a, it's hard to hold a, a good handling car back when these tar cars get to this point and you get shuffled around when you're starting to back off the gas, all the leaders are. It's hard to keep that good handling car down. Wow, all 
He scared it. Didn't I'll tell you, he? here comes that three car. He's going to be leading this race in a minute. Yeah, you can see he's just able to beat these guys through the corner so much, and that's because he's staying in the throttle so much more. This car's just handling good right now. If he gets just a little open on the bottom of the track, he's going to take the lead from Kyle Busch. You see Kyle just running right against that yellow line. I think a junior's going to pass him. He's going to have to get back and, and get a run on him and probably go to the outside and, and pin Kyle down a little bit. And he may need a little bit of a push to make all of that happen. And watching Junior's strength late in this run, DJ and Andy, is amusing to me because I'm looking at that lap count. We're coming up on another set of green flag pit stops. And that could put some guys right on the edge of making this thing to the finish without having to stop again if we get another long run. Well, the way these cars are handling, though, you can, I can hardly imagine we're going to go green <laughs> to the finish. And that's the way I'm thinking if I'm on the box. I, you know, yeah. I see a lot of this going on. I, I would plan on there being another caution or two. Joey Logano running there in fifth position, Dave. And you know, on the last, the first run, actually, the car was so loose, they needed a big adjustment. Two rounds of track bar for Joey. He said, you guys got it three quarters of the way there just a few laps ago. But he said, if I get it clean there, it's ridiculous, meaning it's very, very good. So Joey trying to find his way to the front, where his car will operate perfectly. Doc? And Kyle Busch out front. Now, Kyle DJ has said what you're talking about a moment ago. He said, I am loose tight. I am loose when I get a car like the three car tucked underneath the back of me. And he uses the whole racetrack to, to drive up across and hang on to the car. But once he pulls away by at least two car lengths, the car is a little bit tight out front. But they really can't make an adjustment because if they go too far on the air pressure, it'll get too loose. If they don't go enough, it'll get tighter and they'll have trouble leading the race. So they're in a bit of a quandary right now as they schedule their last stop around lap 73. Leaders in some traffic. Closed up the pack there for a second. Yeah, that loose and push situation. Welcome to Daytona. That's uh, <laughs> something that you fight here because there's just not a lot of grip. Here we see Carl Edwards. That's 15th place. Remember, he was running seventh a little over 20 laps ago when he kind of bailed out, fell back as far as 25th, and has now started picking his way back toward the front. But Shannon not really running in the pack. Well, they, they were a little bit concerned when he first dropped back. They wondered, they asked Carl, do you think that this is a bad idea? Carl said, guys, don't worry about it. We will figure it out. The car's pretty good. I think I can get back up there and compete at the end. Right now, he's slowly trying to make his way. This pit stop will obviously be a good thing for him when they come down pit road, hopefully, to get his way back over the front. Great action on the track right now, guys. Kenny Wallace, Michael McDowell going to lap down on this long green flag run that we've seen. McDowell in the 81 is the 30th place car. Yeah, we've seen we're seeing something right now that we have seen here before in the nationwide series a couple of the better handling cars that are able to stay in the throttle kind of break themselves away from some of the others and all guy there in the 12 cars not let them get too far ahead of him trevor bain had a handful i've seen him a few times have to turn this car right when he gets in the corner he's doing a little bit a lot of that right there Wow, look at that thing. Yeah, it's just having to walk it off the corners. As you said, Andy, we've seen this a couple of times, and it's only so many times that you catch it before you just have to back out and say, okay, need to calm down. We'll get tires and adjustment on it here before long. That's Ryan Newman in the one. Up to challenge Bain. The bump draft for Bain from Clint Boyer in the 21. <laughs> Boyer spent a lot of time up toward the front of his pack. Trevor Bain, Bain's probably thinking, if you'd just see me drive off of that turn four a while ago, well, you, you wouldn't would. be up here on my bumper like that. And from there, we look to the front of the pack. There's Kevin Harvick, 33. He's running in fifth position now. Harvick, one of the guys we think will be a factor at the end of this. And at the top of the stack, Kyle Busch, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Justin Allgaier, and Joey Logano as we close in on what could be the final pit stops. Yeah, they might have seen now that they're getting a little bit. Yeah, well, that, so yeah they're, they're finding out okay. now that they're backing out of the throttle a lot. Yeah, <laughs> and right. the mileage went way higher than they uh, had anticipated. Uh -huh. Yeah. We're like five away. 
Yeah, they've got a choice of two different gears. They could be running the higher higher ratio. Very much. Yep. Very much. Good. Bush and went on. And then the caution flag for something down towards turn three on the back straightaway has put the pace car in front of the field. Now got 30 laps to go. Sunoco race field and to put a half a pound in the right rear on the 12. Brad Keselowski overshot his pit. That first stall down toward turn one, that cost him some time. Yeah, Keselowski and Kyle Busch both slid through their pit stalls. Uh, kind of. Oh, and a tire, too. Who's that from? That looks like uh, maybe some of Greg Sachs's guys standing there waving their arms. That'll be a penalty for someone. We'll see who goes to get it. Yeah, these guys that's forgot the that the, uh, yeah. Yeah, that the racing surface isn't the only thing that's slick here. Pit road is too, especially on those hot tires. All right, so uh, it was one yeah, of Greg Sachs's crew guys. So that'll cost the 88 car. I'll show you the uh, championship leader, Brad Keselowski, the guy that started on the pole tonight. He just uh, just actually underestimated the grip level there, or overestimated it. Yeah, you don't get points for a parallel parking in this. So. Oh, same thing with Kyle Busch. Just no grip, and you don't. The brakes that they run on these cars aren't as good as like what you'd have on an intermediate uh, track and everything. So it takes some adjusting. Get you said, of course, they're wanting to get in there as quickly as they can, but not any grip to be had. Well, well, he, Michael McDowell got the free pass, but so much for that. Didn't have enough fuel. Could take advantage of it. Looks like. Yeah, that's a shame. Needing to get uh, a little help to get back into the pit area, and make what should be his final pit stop. So as they cross the stripe and the scoring resets, Earnhardt Jr. winning the race off of pit road. Kyle Busch is going to come out fifth in line. Carl Edwards is up to sixth. And Brad Kozlowski is down in 13th spot by sliding through his pit stall. 28 laps to go. Cleaning up from the third caution of the race, the scramble to the finish at Daytona coming up. Sachs also got a penalty for commitment violation. <laughs> commitment cone. Is that who hit the cone? Yeah. No. I'm just looking at it down there. <laughs> and then you had a tire go. <laughs> I could. You're inside of Allgaier. Second row, you've got Harvick and Newman, then Kyle Busch and Edwards back up in his sixth position. Remember Brad Keselowski back down around 13th in line after this slide through his pits. And we go green with 26 laps to go. about these late laps at Daytona but you just you just feel the intensity build when they yeah, wave that green feel flag it right there yeah, for sure. I just it's <laughs> like oh uh, <laughs> yep it's getting ready to get junior uh, business is picking up right here now it's we still have 25 laps to go when they get back here but these guys are going to be fighting for every spot now not much a lot of taking not much getting here they'll be going for the little small holes now they won't be waiting on a big yeah. one to open up 
see Carl Edwards. He backed out of it earlier when it got when it got really hot up front. But he won't do it now. He'll have to go. He ducked out from behind Ryan Newman. The one car sliding back with no drafting help. Now Newman ducks in the line behind Edwards. Now we got a single file line back through 10 cars. Got to admit, didn't see that coming. Now give them a couple laps. They're going to be okay right here. These guys that got down to the inside, they're fine. They're hoping they could run a little bit like that before they start shuffling things. See the front bumper on Kevin Harvick's car already worn out. Sparks flying off of the three car. The car dancing car. around. Yeah. Wow. And Kyle Busch. Remember, got shuffled from the lead by Junior just before the caution, then slid through his pits, back up in the third spot, got his Gibbs teammate, Joey Logano, right on the back bumper. As long as the leaders can hold that yellow line, it's going to force these other cars that want to try to advance to move up. Right now, they don't want to. No, they don't, but I would say if Kyle Busch can get a run with his teammate, Joey Logano, Logano on his bumper, then he'll go to that outside and try to get back to the front. And he won't wait very long in doing that, I don't believe. KG Kevin Harvick talked earlier today about not feeling his car had the flat out speed for a pole contending qualifying run. He was right. Thought they had the handle for the race. I'll tell you what. Talk about flat out speed. The last lap for Dale Earnhardt Jr. was a 47 39 fastest lap of the race for him or, or anyone. 23 to go. Getting time to settle it here at Daytona. Earnhardt Jr. in the famous three is out in front. You know one thing you want to see junior win but you don't want to hear all the stuff that's going to come with it about conspiracy <laughs> that you know he did yeah, this and that you know but yeah. you're going to hear you know it's going to be crazy things said yeah he's just got the best handling car tonight you well, know and the, and the thing is the, the more laps go with him out front his car was better on the long run yeah you know if he can hold that lead the longer he can hold it the better off he's going to be the better hand the ones that pique my interest the most are the two Penske cars that have gotten together on the racetrack now. 22 and 12. Remember, they started on the front row. All guy are in the 12. Kozlowski in the 22. Kozlowski got, got shot. Some problem back. with the 12 car. His back panel, his sail panel has come loose. The back bumper, you can see oh, yeah. it flapping. Wow. Maybe you got uh, a little, yeah. too, little too, too heavy much shot. Too much bump drafting back there. Yep. Yeah. How about you Ricky see buffeting the spoiler, though? Yeah, Ricky Stenhouse there in the six car. Yep. You know, he's had his problems. That's it for his second straight up in the air. Still good. Said your bumper came off. Yeah, somebody probably banged it off of there. Whoa, oh, there he goes. Look yeah, out. Yeah. He just lost it right there. Just all that downforce. Hang on to it. Hang what on, hang on, hang on, hang on. That was a good save. Inside here, no caution. No caution. Oh, and yeah. all these he's guys around him. Yeah. yeah. And they said, but he's cost these guys a lot of momentum and they've yeah. lost the lead draft. Yeah, the lead draft got away from them quite a bit now. It'll take a lap to catch up. Or uh, to actually get back to speed, not, yes. like, not to mention catching back up. Go ahead, Mike. Alan, listening to the radio uh, for the 12, you could sense something like this might be coming. Not too long ago, he came over the radio and said, we are all over the place. In fact, he told his crew chief he thought there was a hole in the body somewhere because it was so aero sensitive, more aero loose and more aero tight than they were when they started the race. So Justin certainly could sense something was changing with his race car. Now you can see that that sail panel back there is just making it very, very unstable. He's going to end up wrecking it again here if he's not careful. They don't test this kind of thing in the wind tunnel, so they don't know yeah. what it's actually doing. There's Chad Walter, his crew chief, getting a good look at it on the radio and getting a battle plan together for his guys when that 12 car comes to pit road. At some point, you got to figure they're going to have to. They're waiting on a caution, but the way this car's driving, they might need the caution. Yeah. Yeah, and I would have to think that NASCAR's looking at this, wondering, whoa, as he gets really sideways there, he needs to just back out and take it easy and hope that he does get a caution and it's not him. What that? It's crazy. Yeah, head forward. You can't afford to get on the bottom here. Just pedal it nice and easy. What that half spin did, uh, as you were talking about, was break the front seven cars away from the majority of the pack. 
And that really changes the dynamic of the end of this race for all those guys trying to run for the win. So Allgaier hanging on, <laughs> as you said, hoping for the caution and hoping not to be the caution. Junior Harvick, Bush, and Logano, front four, trying to break away. Crazy loose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think? I don't know how he saved that I thing. Know. I don't either. Heck, I thought the caution was already out. <laughs> <laughs> it's 15 laps to go, boys. Yeah. How's Stenhouse up in sixth? Yeah. That's what I said. He's doing a great job tonight. Uh oh. What's that about? Like here at the World Center of Racing. I like his chances, but I'm looking back uh, behind this group and we saw talk about how those groups separated. Uh, Brad Keselowski is leading this second group back up through there. Been you know the last few laps about a half a second faster than Junior, so they're they're going to get there. It looks like. Yeah, and they're, they're going to get a chance too because at some point in time the 18 and the 20 are going to try to get by. Kevin Harvick's going to also probably try to to get out and try to do what he can to win this race. So that's going to allow them once these guys get side by side. Clint Boyer and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Fifth and sixth tucked up tightly together. You mentioned what a nice job Stenhouse has done tonight. He really has. He qualified well. He, he drove his car smart through the first part of this race and now he's got himself up here with a chance to get a top five finish. You know he, we've documented the troubles that he's had but this is a great night for him. One thing you got to do too is give him credit for knowing how he needed this car to, to handle and getting it, getting it set up for the race and having a good handling race car because that's what's kept him up there. Doc. Exactly, Andy. They made major adjustments on that first stop with track bar and wedge and air pressure. When he told them, he said the car is now good in, a little bit free coming off. And he, they said, just drive it and be comfortable. He told me before the race that his run at Loudon last week had given him so much confidence, and that's what made the difference in qualifying today. When he qualified six, and now trying to hang on and maybe, just maybe, get his first top five finish of 2010. Doc, interestingly enough, in a news conference earlier today here at the Speedway, NASCAR chairman and CEO Brian France said that changes may be coming to this nationwide series to ensure that seats remain available for young drivers and new teams like Stenhouse, uh, a young talent trying to build his way up the racing ladder. It's always a balance, though, between uh, having all these cup stars and great race car drivers in the series for the young guys to learn from and having enough available seats. Jeremy Clements has been coasting on the apron. It looks like he's going to make it back around to pit road. And he is it. That's that's him. They're rolling in. So we stay under the green flag. Twenty nine cars on the lead lap. Nine laps to go, Dave. And Alan, when you think about the paint scheme on this three car and why Junior chose it with the entities that all agreed to doing this over all the others he had the options on. It's interesting to hear his answer on that. We talked to him in qualifying today. He was a little bit jealous when, when uh, Martin Truex got to use it in 2004 on his way to his first of two nationwide championships. It was his favorite paint scheme that his dad ran growing up. And even recently, he's used it to design his own cars when he races online. He said, I wanted to make sure that if I ran this three one last time, that it was going to be in this paint scheme, the one that was my favorite whenever my dad drove it. Running this car tonight, the collaboration between Teresa Earnhardt, Richard Childress, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. And right now, I, I can tell you just from watching the fans on the property earlier today, there are a lot of Wrangler yellow and blue three shirts in this grandstand. If he's able to hold off this snarling pack of drivers, it's going to be an awfully loud ovation. Yeah, you he's see, it's just a four car pack right there, but now Keslowski has got up to Stenhouse, and he's been catching this group three, four, five tenths a lap. I yeah. think he's going to get right to him. It looks like at the end of the race. Yeah, Sten, Ricky Stenhouse did a nice job there. He saw the 22 come and he pulled out to, to get around the 21 and use Brad Keselowski's push to get himself up in the fifth spot. And they do continue to catch this lead group. Of Brad Keselowski's victories this year, two of them have come on last lap passes. One of those at what many consider to be the sister track to this Daytona Speedway, Talladega. Well, they're going to have a lot of momentum coming right here at about the right they're time. They're going to have to find something to do with it now. They need to be making plans because they are going to have, you know, a few miles an hour faster than the leaders are running. 
Yeah, the only problem that Brad's going to have is he has nobody pushing him right there. So he's going to have to make a decision when he gets up there. Is he going to continue to follow this six, even though he doesn't have a lot of experience here, or is he going to try to do something on his own? Can I answer that? Yeah. No, he's not going to keep following him. <laughs> <laughs> six laps to go. Yeah, they were about four tenths of a second faster once again. Those two cars catching this group of four. Okay, it's gone. Brad Keselowski is a fast race car. Mike? You know, guys, when you look at Brad Keselowski's resume, a couple of things that stand out, and that would be his Cup Series win at Talladega and, of course, the Nationwide Series win there earlier this year. Obviously, this style of racing suits him. So I had a conversation with his crew chief, Paul Wolf, this weekend. He said part of it's instinctual, but part of it is the fact that he works at it so hard. He studies videotapes. He knows exactly where he wants to be. He puts himself in simulated situations so that he knows where he wants to be at this stage of the race. He studies this style of racing, and the homework could be paying off. He's running toward the front, but only a few laps to go, guys. And behind them, Ryan Newman and Carl yeah, they're Edwards coming too. hooked up. Yeah. yeah. These fans are standing. They're excited for Junior. Oh, yeah. They see this the Whoa, six and four two coming. Did you see his hands working the wheel there? He had his hands full. Lap ago, we heard on Kyle, it was Kyle Bush's radio. We heard. Here we go. Here goes Keselowski now around Stenhouse. Kyle had something on the grill, apparently. We heard from his spotter saying, okay, it's gone. That was that move we saw out of traffic. And Paul Menard again. Now another right front tire down on this 98 car. Still under green. Not anymore. Caution is out, is out yeah. for debris from the 98 car with five, now four laps to go. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Well, you had to know when you saw that tire that there was going to be debris. Oh, yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no choice but to throw the yellow right there. And there it oh, went. Man, you can see again. that tire pop. Same spot on the racetrack, too. After the first one came back, got on the Oh, yeah, look at all the debris. Yeah, there's a little bit there. Yeah. Oh, people hitting it, too. All right, uh, Mr. Champion Crew Chief. Man. Do no. you pit? Let me set you, you up know here. What? Got 28 cars on the lead lap. You're probably looking at, if not a green white checker finish, Something a very short run. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let me tell you, Andy, before you answer, <laughs> that I did see a crew chief yesterday uh, and was talking to him. He said that even with five laps to go, that tires were going to be so important with these cars, with the way they drive, that they were going to have to come get tires. Yeah, and you see all the debris, too. That's going to probably make my decision to come get the four tires. If I was, lean, if I was on the fence after dr driving through all this debris field, I would really want tires. But, uh, man, that's such a tough, tough decision. And so I'm figuring that with the amount of time it's going to take to clean up all that debris, we are probably looking at a green-white checker. Yes, more than likely. Uh, the yeah. thing is, I'm looking at the lap times, and they were still running, you know, very fast lap times, which tells me they were on the throttle pretty good. So mm -hmm. it'll be tough. And I, I, I would say you'll see some uh, cars stay out right here, but you're going to see some pit stops as well. Again, 28 cars on the lead lap. Here comes the field. Pit road is open. Now we find out. And Harvick looks. Kyle Busch, Kyle Busch takes it and brings a bunch of cars with him. Yes. Six staying out at least at the front, Doc. And originally, Kyle was going to follow the leader and do only what the leader did. In fact, Jason Reckless said, if you come, we're going to go two. And Kyle called it off, said, no, I want four tires if I come, and I may just come. So he did four tires, no changes. Let's go down to Mike. And Ryan, Ryan Newman also on pit road looking for some fresh rubber. Right side only for the one car. Carl Edwards on pit road. Justin Allgaier getting that uh, back panel repaired as best they can. I have nine, nine cars not stopping uh, on, on this and uh, included Dale Earnhardt Jr., Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, and Brad Keselowski. Oh, what a gonna finish this is going to be. Yes, sir. See Kyle make that decision. He knew he couldn't beat Junior. Yeah, and he's not racing for a championship. No, he yeah. said, I couldn't beat him like this. I'm not, well, I'll run second. Take a shot. 
If a few more come, he it would have been perfect, but too many stayed out there. I, I can't see yeah. him making it happen. Well, that's why you just you, know, you can't tell if that's a good decision yeah. or not. You just got to do it. See what happens. Uh, it's been a, a fun race to, uh, to be a part of so far, and hopefully we can uh, have a good finish here. Well, now you're following the, that blue and yellow number three. Uh, are you just kind of playing a cat and mouse game with him? Do you know when you're going to try to make your move? Really like to see a Chevrolet win, um, whether it's us or the 21 or the three. But uh, we're going to get split up right here on this restart, so we'll see what happens. Okay, Kevin, good luck. Yes. I, I, say whatever, I say, excuse me, I say whatever plan he had for making that move changed when that yellow flew. One lap to go. We just heard from Kevin Harvick, who did not pit under the yellow. Let's hear from Kyle Busch's team. They called him in from third, Doc. Yeah, Jason Ratcliffe, you left it up to your driver to stay out or come in. He chose to pit. Why? I think for several reasons. I don't, you know, you could see it. Everybody was just lined up. You had what you had. And, uh, you know, without the track position, I think he felt like he needed a little bit of an advantage and tires would give him that if he's going to win it. Otherwise, we were just going to be stuck there with the top five maybe. So I think it's a good call. Uh, we could get multiple, you know, green-white checkers right here. And if we do, I think he's going to, you know, look like a hero. And tires are worth a lot. I mean, the rest of these other guys have over 20 laps on their tires. Uh, so it's going to be exciting. All right, Kyle Busch rolling the dice. Dave. The three cars stayed out. Pros and cons in that. Uh, Tony Urie Jr., what were the pros for staying out? I mean, you got track position here. Two laps to go. Uh, all you got to do really is make it back around here to the white, and if something happens, it's over. So, uh, you know, our car's been better on the long run than it has on the short run. So, uh, you know, we just took the track position. We'll see if he can hang them off and uh, see what we can do. Good on those old tires. And Junior did request to the 20 team, uh, have Joey push me really well, but don't spin me out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so to reset it for you, uh, the top eight drivers did not pit for tires. You're looking back through that at the top of the screen. Sorensen's dropping back, uh, pitted too soon. You got Newman and Steve Wallace and Steve Arpin in the 166 and 7 that just changed two tires. Then Kyle Busch, by the time Sorensen drops back, he's going to be 12th for the restart for the green white checker. Last five July Daytona races ended with a green-white checker, keeping the trend going tonight. Let's also mention the uh, rules for the green-white checker. Once the leader has taken the white flag, if the caution waves at any point after that, the race is over. If the caution comes out before the leader takes the white flag on the track, then we'll try it again. Up to three times. Pace car off, Earnhardt, Harvick, Logano, Keslowski, Stenhouse, Sachs, green flag. Whew. Junior won the push and he got it right from the very beginning. Man, Joey Logano Still was all over. Here comes Harvick and Keselowski back on the outside, though. Brendan gone, bobbing into the outside lane, coming into the picture. 62 car with a push from Clint Boyer. Whoa, oh, whoa. Contact there. They keep him straight for now. That was Kligerman on the back of Harvick. Gone with a run to the outside, oh, now bumped to the inside. Yeah, the bump drafting's getting a lot harder here, and I'm not sure these guys can keep control of these cars like that. Meanwhile, Earnhardt Jr. and Logano have shot out ahead of the pack. If they get to the white flag before a caution flag, then the race is in its last lap. Looks like they're going to do that. White flag in the air. White flag at Daytona. Stenhouse in the mix in the six car. If those front two get side by side, that could open the door for Stenhouse in that six. He's had a great run all night. Kyle Busch still bottled up back in traffic. He's 11th. Looks like Logano might be waiting until turn four here. He's getting a run right now. Stenhouse pushing, pushing. Here goes Keselowski. Got a wreck in the three. Keep digging. Keep coming. Then. There is a car in the wall behind them. Here they come to the checker flag. You got it, man. And Earnhardt is going to drive a number three car to victory lane at Daytona again. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins. Well, we dang them. Good job, guys. I'll uh, see you again. Thanks, 88 crew, for the pit stop. Uh, Tony Jr., I appreciate your work, man. I love winning races with you, buddy. 
Incredible. I don't know if it's you guys, but that's chills right there. You did a good too. job. You guys got the hell of a race car. The car that got in trouble was Brendan Gone. Appreciate you, Richard. Who has uh, driven around and looked across together. the finish line. Kelly. Wow. Danny, I know you didn't work on the Wrangler car, but you did work on that three with yeah. Dale. It's great to see this. This is uh, this is something I'm glad just to be up here to witness. The emotion from Tony Uri Jr. after his car took the checkered flag, Mike. And Tony Uri Jr. collecting his thoughts right now, wiping a tear from your eye. What does this mean? Um, man, you know, we lost everything here and to come back with that number and do this, that means everything. Can't follow that up, guys. You can hear the emotion. A very, very special win for everybody involved with the three team. Alan? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, we, we have all, I think, if you followed racing for a long time, you experienced the highs and, and the lows uh, revolving around this whole story with Dale Earnhardt in Daytona. But I think for Dale Earnhardt Jr., and I think for these fans, they're going to revel in the highs right now. This is something Jr. needed to... Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure he's taking this time just to kind of collect his thoughts a little bit, too. Compose himself. You know, he, he applied the pressure to himself by wanting to do this and then went out and took all the energy from everything there and drove this car to victory tonight. Incredible. Watching the fans' reaction, soaking it all in. guess what's going through his mind right now. I'm sure there are a lot of things and you know if a lot of talk about whether the three should be run and shouldn't and if there was anybody deserving to do it it was certainly Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his father would be extremely proud in a lot of ways. He picked the paint job. He told us on NASCAR countdown earlier that uh, this should probably be the only time he would run this number and not do it again in the future. And he has certainly gotten the most from it tonight. Now going down for the spoiler angle check before he makes his way toward Daytona's victory lane. On he goes, and, and as I say again, I can only imagine the thoughts that are going through his mind on that cool down lap. And while he drove around, his crew all waiting for him. And the drive into victory lane for Dale Earnhardt Jr right now we'll talk to him and find out what those thoughts are in just a minute Earnhardt wins at Daytona
waved and the lead pack steamed to the finish line. Junior had enough to hold off Logano, Stenhouse, Keslowski, and all the rest. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. has won tonight here in Daytona. We go to our Wrangler Victory Circle now and hear from tonight's winner. So uh, safe to say you were anxious to get out and celebrate this great victory. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know where to start, who to start thanking. Liz is so long. Um, I want to thank Wrangler first off. Um, <clears throat> I told him I wanted to run this paint scheme this year. I didn't, you know, we weren't asking for more money. We just carve off a little bit of what we had in the personal service agreement and we'd make it work. I just wanted, I love working with them. They're such a great company. So I want to thank them. I want to thank, uh, in no uncertain order, our, uh, um, Rick, uh, Rick Hendricks Motors, uh, the engine program, stepped it up for us, and this, that's what wins races here. So I want to thank those guys. They deserve a lot of credit. I want to thank the fans here tonight. Um, I didn't want to do a burnout and tear the motor up because we just said we got to learn what we gained on the motor, take it back, and, and try to uh, figure out to, how we can make it better, see how the wear was and stuff. But I want to thank the fans for uh, for coming out. It was a great crowd. Uh, my uh, JR Motorsports teammates and, my, and all the guys at the shop, the 88 crew pitted the car for us. I want to thank them for doing that. Everybody just volunteered <laughs> for this deal. So uh, I feel lucky. I feel real lucky. I was so worried that I wasn't going to win because uh, nothing uh, but a win, you know, was good enough. Yeah. Well, just for everybody in the world, you know, if you didn't win, it was uh, what, a, what a waste of time. Why to do it? So I worked hard to try to win it. And uh, uh, not only, uh, you know, for Daddy, I'm proud of, uh, you know, of him going to the Hall of Fame, and he would be proud of this, I'm sure. And, um, you know, just all these fans. He has so many great fans, not, not just mine. His, this is for his fans. Hope that they enjoyed this. Uh, this is it. No more three for me. We'll win, and this will be it. That's it. You drove up by the wall. You looked into the eyes of a lot of them. What did you see up there? Oh, I don't know, man. I couldn't see that good. A lot of sweat, and I just... Uh, what did you feel? Didn't want to do a burnout because I wanted to test, uh, tear this motor apart and see what we did, how we improved, and uh, I got. It's emotional, you know. Um, I'm proud of myself. Uh, I'm proud of, uh, you know. I'm proud to have done what I did uh, with this group, uh, the JR Motorsports group. Uh, I'm proud for Richard and Teresa and and everybody who was associated that came together to make this happen, uh, but mainly the fans. I mean, I, I hope that they really got a lot out of this and because uh, it was trying um, emotionally to, to put it together. Um, I'll quit yapping. You know, y'all go interview the rest of them guys. We're glad, we're happy. Uh, thanks for all, everybody that tuned in. Uh, it was a good race and I enjoyed it. We're glad you put the three back in victory <laughs> lane. I know a lot of people are, Dale. And as we look back up here, uh, I think Doc has uh, caught up with Richard there. D let me just ask you real quick. Sure. When you gave him a hug, what was that like with Richard? Well, he just said that Daddy would be happy, real happy. And who would know better than, than him? Um, I feel the same way, but you never, I was, I never knew what I was going to get with Daddy sometimes, but um, he was a, he was a loose cannon. But um, Richard and him were great buds. And, you know, I don't know how this happened. You know, we didn't have the, uh, the best car early in the race. The 20 car had to run on the back straight away. I thought the race was over. Um, the six, he ducked out to try to look, and the six didn't go, so he, he pulled it back in. Who knows what would have happened there, but these things are a lottery, and I, I just feel real lucky to have won the race and uh, the whole package with the car and team and Richard and everybody else, just real emotional. But I'm glad for him. Here, I don't want everybody just to be happy. You know what I mean? That's all I want. I think they will be because you have a heavy right foot and big shoulders to do this, Junior. Thank you. Let's go to Doc. Just a few feet away from where Dale Jr. is celebrating Richard. So many wonderful memories. So what does it mean to you now to see that three car back in victory lane? Well, it's really special. You know, I, I know how much has been put into this by Dale Jr., Kelly, their whole race team. And uh, when Kelly came to us and put it together, I thought it was a great tribute to Dale. To see Dale Jr. here in Winter Circle tonight, the look on his face brought back many memories of when I saw the uh, Dale Sr. here. Talk about the memories. I didn't think I'd ever see you with the black three wearing a blare and a hat with a black three on it. You said 10 years ago you probably would not have a three car on the racetrack again. You brought it tonight. And uh, what did you think when you saw that car go to the top of the board like the old days? Well, when you see the three up on the board at Daytona, it brought back a lot of memories. Dale Jr. ran the three for us here in 2002 
and won the race here, and here he is tonight, won another race, so it's special. Would you consider running it again or down the road in the future? I mean, it was such a special night for the fans who enjoyed it so much, and obviously it brings back some success for RCR, Teresa Earnhardt, and Dale Jr. No, we don't have no plans on running it. My grandsons run it. Both of them run it. One runs it in the truck and the other one in the K&N series, but we don't have any plans of bringing it back anymore. Dale Jr., when asked a moment ago, said you told him when he came into victory lane, his daddy would be very, very proud of him tonight. Obviously, I know Dale looking down. If he were here, what do you think Dale Sr. would say right now? Uh, he'd be very proud. I, I, he's very proud of his whole family and, and everything they've accomplished and a uh, lot more wins in there for Dale Jr. Richard Childress uh, championships, wins at Daytona. He was a part of this whole process along with Teresa Earnhardt, Kelly Earnhardt and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, bringing back some wonderful memories, Alan, and bringing back the colors and the victory for Earnhardt here at Daytona. A great night here at Daytona, Doc. You heard Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s words a minute ago. Winning was everything tonight. And he got to the checkered flag first in that number three car at Daytona. An emotional victory for Tony Geary Jr., who headed up putting that effort together. And the fans leaving the Speedway so very happy tonight as the sport's popular, most popular driver has driven the number made famous by his father to Daytona's victory lane.